the next stage what we want is to see similar to the propositional logic what are the laws that can be valid in the first order logic right so we will be a bit greedy in the sense that knowing some laws in propositional logic how to give analogous laws in the first order logic immediately instead of doing them separately right for example we know p implies p is valid in propositional logic so does it imply that px implies px is also valid in first order logic so because anyway we are concerned with the patterns only right so they are having the same pattern can we conclude from this or we will have to go to semantics again and do it right so this is the greedy approach we will be taking so from the sum uh, from the laws of propositional logic itself we can now formulate some laws for the first order logic if this analogy really holds right but there you have the interpretations for the propositions now in first order logic you have the states instead of the interpretations so how to connect those interpretation with the states that first we have to see right so if not everywhere at least wherever that connection remains we should be able to go for the first order logic right so basically it is like suppose you have one interpretation in propositional logic right so of any proposition it can be either evaluating to 1 or 0 so let's say it can be there true or it can be false now when you take one state corresponding to this interpretation the state similarly should hold for whatever formula we want to substitute in place of that proposition right for example we take the same p implies p say p implies p is valid we know right instead of this small p I want to write p x. So, I would get p x implies p x fine. Now, I consider a state which will be same thing or evaluating the same way to this as the interpretation evaluates p implies p. Then immediately we can say that interpretation satisfies this if and only if this state satisfies this that is what we want to preserve first right. So, what we propose is suppose i have uh, a proposition and px a formula so in some way i am identifying this p with this px i have a map let us say right informally we can write this way it says that you have some map for each proposition it gives some formula there right so for small p I have this px. Okay. So now what I do? Suppose i is an interpretation. I is an interpretation. So this is in the sense of pl. Okay. So let us write pl interpretation instead of just interpretation. And similarly, let us take uh, I L a state. So, they are in such a way connected that whenever I of this P is 1, I have I L satisfies P X. Okay. Now, what I do? I take any formula, let us say x. In x, there can be p's, suppose there are some small p's occurring in x. Then, in all those places wherever this small p is occurring, we want to substitute p x instead, right. So, let us say let x be a formula. But we want to start from the propositions like p implies p. So, we will not take in general any formula, but let us start with the proposition where small p occurs. Okay. Let us be a proposition. Denote by x p substituted by let us say p x the formula obtained from 
x by replacing each occurrence of p with p x. Okay. So, now what happens x p substituted with p x has no variable capture right because we have started with x as a proposition itself there is no quantifiers right so things are simplified here there is no variable capture is occurring fine now with that what we want to say is since i and i l are connected the same way it small i satisfies small p if and only if i l satisfies p x. So, what we expect is x is satisfied by that i if and only if x p equal to p x is also satisfied that i l right that is what we want to say. So, if i satisfies x then i l must satisfy p x not p x it is x p substituted with p x. and conversely also right. Similarly, if I l satisfies this new formula then I should satisfy x ok. In fact, it is not limited to such atomic formulas as p x we can take any other formula also that should also work right. So, let us do that let p be a proposition and identify any formula corresponding to this p fine. So, let us write it as x subscript p instead of p x. So, everywhere we should be able to substitute that replace this p x by x p. So, let us substitute this is what we expect to hold so it is really number of occurrences of connectives right so we wrote occurring here but you can make it better. So, suppose in the basic step what will happen this number of occurrences of connectives is 0 fine. So, basic step if this number is 0 then how does it look like it can be top or it can be bottom or it can be a propositional variable fine that is how propositions have been formal formed. So, once this happens you will get correspondingly x p replaced by x p as top or bottom or p x. So, here it is x p ok now the things are clear because the assumption says i satisfies p if and only if i l satisfies x p right. So, the conclusion and the assumption they are the same here conclusion is also the same thing i satisfies p if and only if i l satisfies x p replaced by x p which is now x p fine. So, basis case is clear now in the induction step what do you do? So, you can say x can be in the form not of some y or y and z or y or z or y implies z 
or y by conditional z these are the possibilities let us take the first case say y x equal to not y x equal to not y then in this case x p replaced by x p would give not y p replaced by x p okay fine now by induction hypothesis there is one connective less here so you do it exactly how to do induction hypothesis is for number of connectives less than or equal to m the conclusion holds now it has m plus 1 connectives then this y has y has number of connectives less than or equal to m therefore you can use the induction hypothesis so that says i satisfies p if and only if i l satisfies sorry i satisfies y if and only if i l satisfies y p substituted by x p right this is what the induction hypothesis says so i satisfies y if and only if i l satisfies y p replaced by x p now conclusion is clear fine because of the connective knot the same way also i l tackles knot as i is that clear now for all the connectives proof will be similar you just go on writing it that's all fine so let's call it our first lemma for substitution now the main theorem you can write easily where you need not connect i and i l you have to go for validity let us say fine so we can write now on the uniform substitution in a tautology so you are telling valid propositions in pl also here also we are telling valid formulas so this valid might confuse we will say in fl if you take a proposition which is valid we will call it a tautology right while considering both pl and fl we will say valid propositions as tautologies right so that will not have any conflict of terminology this is what it says uniform substitution in a pl valid proposition instead of telling pl valid proposition we are making it sata tautology so now it says that if you start with a tautology and then replace each occurrence of a propositional variable by another identified formula xp then whatever you get from that that will also preserve validity right so you have to only write it if x is a tautology then x where p is substituted by x p is valid to write with every detail we have to go to this first portion of the lemma let p be a proposition identify x p a formula corresponding to this p then denote by x p equal to x p the formula obtained from x by replacing each occurrence of p with x p then right whenever x is a tautology p uh, x where p is substituted by x p is also valid right proof is clear is there anything to do huh yes is it clear or not hmm not clear okay x is a tautology so that means you take any interpretation it satisfies it okay now what do you do you take any state x p equal to x p okay in this state in this state what will happen 
this small p is either evaluated to 1 or 0, right. Whatever way it is evaluated, you find out which i is that. Is it okay? See, this is the way we will be proceeding. Suppose x is a tautology. We want to show that x p replaced by x p is valid. So, let i l be a state. Okay. Now, i l satisfies x p, it is a model of that or it is not a state model of that. right? So, define on interpretation i or on a p l interpretation. i by what you do i of p equal to 1 if i l satisfies x p it either satisfies or it does not satisfy right or it can happen it does not satisfy in that case you put i p equal to 0 Either I L satisfies X P or it does not satisfy X P, right. So, whatever is the case, do that. Okay. Now then apply the lemma. That is all proof is over. Okay. So, once it is a tautology, each I evaluates it to 1, right. By the lemma, each I L will also evaluate to 1. Clear? So, this is called uniform substitution in a tautology. There is again another type of uniform substitution. See, if you have started with tautology, you are ending with valid propositions. Now, instead of starting with tautology, in F L, suppose you have valid formulas, can you substitute there itself instead of from the proposition? Right? So, that will mention as uniform substitution. We are not starting with any tautology here it can be any valid formulas fine our thing is that we assume or we presume that it should go correctly huh? so whatever formula you are getting after the substitution should also be valid right but there can be a problem there can be some problem there it is the variable capturing suppose you start with uh, one formula in this form x equal to p implies for each x p that is allowed in f l as a formula right this is a proposition so proposition is a zero or a predicate before that predicate you can always use one quantification for all x though it is vacuous this x doesn't occur there but it is still allowed now what happens if you substitute this p by x p or say p x. So, this will be equal to p x implies for each x p x now variable is captured. When variable is being captured, I have just substituted this p by p x. Formally, this is how substitution will work, right. So, what I get from this is p x implies for each x p x, this is not valid, right. Is that okay? Like you take one state where uh, x becomes 2, okay. p means prime. So, in the set of natural numbers, it will say 2 is prime implies every natural number is prime, which is false. Right, so this is not valid. Though where from we have started is valid because there is no x there, so it is vacuous. It doesn't matter whether x is there or not. That is valid. Okay. So we should have some constant on the 
capturing of the variables once you generalize it to valid propositions or valid formulas okay so that is exactly the proviso that is exactly the constant we need fine so let's formulate the theorem uniform substitution so we start with let x be a formula p a propositional variable then x p a formula corresponding to or identifier to correspond to this p in fact this is only for our mention huh? formula is enough this is what we are going to do right then denote by x p substituted by x p as earlier right by uh, or the formula obtained from x by replacing each occurrence of p with x p right. So, now we need something more we have to give our constant right. Suppose no free variable of x p becomes bound or is bound really in x p replaced by x p. This is the condition we need. If x is valid then x p replaced by x p is also valid. Okay. Again proof will be similar, but you have to formulate first its lemma then proceed. So, the same proof almost will work because corresponding to each i you will get one i l which are so related p is satisfied whenever that x p is also satisfied in the corresponding state model and then proceed. In proving that lemma now induction hypothesis or induction step will involve one more thing that whenever you started with your x that can have a quantifier earlier it was a proposition. So, you had no quantifier now when you start with x itself there can be quantifiers. So, two more cases will come right that x is in the form uh, for each x y or there is x y in that place you will need this proviso to prove it okay? that you can do exercise. So, these are the two things which will be useful in getting many more theorems from the propositional logic first and then from the first order logic itself. Okay. There is another kind of replacement which we had done earlier which is the equivalent substitution. When if something is equivalent to another you can always replace it preserving equivalence. So, let us formulate it first. let A and B be formulas x a formula. So, what we want to say is that if A is equivalent to B then in x you replace these occurrences of A and B right you should end with some equivalent formula that is what it says. So, suppose a is equivalent to b denote by 
x a equivalently substituted by b okay one subscript we give now the formula obtained from x by replacing each but do we need each occurrence here now they are equivalent even some will do huh? so that each or no or some occurrences of a by b in x okay so what we conclude is x should be equivalent to the new formula or you say the new formula is equivalent to the old one fine so proof is again conceptual there is nothing much to it so when you say a is equivalent to b right you take any state model or any state then in that state whenever a is satisfied b is also satisfied and conversely that is the meaning of equivalence okay now let us start with any state i l we want to find out whether i l satisfies this new formula or not or even the old formula let us say i l satisfies x or not okay now how do you find out whether i l satisfies x or not go for our scheme our formal semantics simply reduces satisfaction to the level of satisfaction by a predicate right uh, is this clear conceptually or not suppose i have a formula x which looks like px implies px for simplicity now let us say whether il we want to find out whether il satisfies px implies px right so how do we proceed our formal semantics asks us to do the following we say il satisfies px implies px if next step is we will use the semantics of implies that connective arrow so that says il does not satisfy px or il satisfies px it will come to this right if it is something more let us say for each x p x implies p x this is what we want to do then this step will be does not satisfy for each x p x or i l satisfies p x so there is one more thing to be done for the quantifier so we go next we write if and no left for some d in our domain right what happens i l x fix to d does not satisfy p x is that okay for each x it does not satisfy that means there is at least one element for which it does not hold right so then what happens we write this then or i l satisfies p x okay that is what we had done so finally it is reduced to some state either satisfies that atomic formula or it doesn't satisfy atomic formula it is reduced to that inside something for some for all or and something is written okay so we are now thinking that conceptually suppose i start with any state that satisfies x so my formal semantics says that i should go on writing types like this in our meta language english right go on writing like this finally where something will be written px not px or something will come okay atomic proper atomic formulas will be coming il satisfies some atomic formulas or il doesn't satisfy some atomic formulas with some all right this kind of expressions will come there now what happens whenever il satisfies a is occurring there in that big reduction il satisfies a you can simply replace il satisfies b okay because a and b are equivalent 
right. Now, doing that whenever whichever occurrence corresponding to the replacements A and B, you replace I L satisfies A as I L satisfies B or I L does not satisfy A as I L does not satisfy B. Now, you get a big expression like this, which will simply prove I L satisfies X A replaced by B, that is the proof conceptually. The doubt is that we are not writing directly if I L satisfies X, then I L satisfies X P equal to X P. The reason is I do not know how the interpretations of P and I L of X P are related. In your lemma, which you proved for uh, substitution in a tautology, you had that connection, right. So, it can happen that one interpretation satisfies P, but the corresponding state I am considering does not satisfy X P, right. So, in the basis of itself, it fails, is it clear? But then to prove this uniform substitution, you have to start with a lemma with that constant corresponding to I of P, you first construct I L, the corresponding I L, which will behave the same way with X P, fine. But anyway, ultimately our result is this, which we will be using, not for any particular state, right. Validity or satisfactory, that is what we want. So, similarly here, you are starting with A equivalently replaced by B and it goes to the level of states, but since A is equivalent to B, always you can write I L satisfy that, I L does not satisfy that as it is, fine. So, proving or formulating another lemma is not required here, because of the condition of equivalence. Is it clear? So, these are the three substitution theorem, which we will be using to obtaining many more laws from the professionalology and also from the first order logic, right. Let us see some examples, what are your laws in proportional logic. One is the example we have already given. Suppose, I start with uh, say Clavius laws, huh? so which says not P implies P therefore, P. This is what it says. Fine. Now, the same thing I can now write in uh, first order logic, which will look like whatever be the formula x, it will say x implies x. From this, you can conclude x. Now, x is any formula, right. If you have taken x as p x, you would get p x y implies p x y, this implies p x y, this is valid, ok. And with a lot of infinitely many, so it is a law, replace this x by any formula. <coughs> so, now you can translate or rewrite all those laws from P L to F L, whatever you did. We are not going to write them again. Now, there are three theorems in propositional logic. We want to see whether those things still hold or not. For example, your deduction theorem. If you apply deduction theorem here in propositional logic, it will look like not P implies P, therefore P. You can take it as a consequence. Fine. Now, also it will come as not x implies x and tells x, <coughs> but then you have used deduction theorem. This part is easy because modus ponens. The other side from this to conclude not p implies p implies p is valid is really your main part of the deduction theorem. Right. So, now the question is whether deduction theorem holds in F L, whether monotonicity holds, whether reductio ad absurdum holds, in F L, right. 
So let us see monotonicity. How does it look like? So it says suppose sigma is a subset of gamma sets of propositions. Now you will write sets of formulas, right? F L formulas. And then let us take another say x is a formula, B a formula. So, it says if sigma entails gamma, sigma entails x, then gamma also entails x. Okay. And there is another part, it says if gamma is satisfiable, then sigma is satisfiable. Since gamma is satisfiable, it has a state model. So, you have to start with a state. So, let I L be a state. So, when you say I L is a state, we are not writing all the details. We should have written first i equal to d phi is an interpretation. Then let l be a valuation under this interpretation, so that i l becomes a state. So, all these things are assumed here. When? So, suppose i l is a state. Now, then what do we say that? If i l satisfies gamma, then what happens? By definition, I L is a state model of each proposition in gamma or each formula in gamma, now, right? So just the detail I have to write. I L is a state model of each formula in gamma. Now sigma is a subset of gamma, so I L is a state model. Just very mechanical of each formula in sigma. Right. So, this says any state model of gamma is also a state model of sigma, that much is enough. Those two propositions are reformulation of this. Huh? Okay. So, it is directly proves that if gamma is satisfiable, then so is sigma. Right? If it is satisfiable, I L satisfies it, therefore I L satisfies sigma, therefore sigma is satisfiable. Okay? So, second thing, if sigma entails x, now the other one, if sigma entails x, then whenever I L is a model of sigma, it is also a, is not it, we will say I L is also a state model of x. This is given. We want to prove gamma entails x. So, we start with a state model of gamma. But we have already shown any state model of gamma is a state model of sigma. So, I L satisfies sigma. Now, since sigma entails x, I L satisfies x, that is the end of the proof. Okay. So, monotonicity is easy. And now you see if you have taken just small i as in proportional logic instead of this i l, is it not the same proof as that of proportional logic? So, it is really proportional in that sense, the proof is also proportional, it does not go to the detail of quantifiers. Okay? Because state models perform the same way as interpretations in proportional logic. 
then what about redox or rhapsodon or reduction theorem? Just we have to formulate it. Huh? So let sigma be a set of formulas. X a formula, then it says sigma entails X if and only if sigma union not X is unsatisfiable. Also, another formulation sigma entails not X if and only if sigma union x is unsatisfiable. Okay, now, what happens here? First one let us say, so sigma entails x, you want to prove sigma union not x is unsatisfiable. <coughs> so, first suppose sigma entails x, to so, show sigma union not x is unsatisfiable, how do we proceed? So, let I L be a state. If I L satisfies sigma, there are two cases I L satisfies sigma or I L does not satisfy sigma. So, if I L does not satisfy sigma, then there is nothing I L does not satisfy sigma even not x also, whatever that I L may be monotonicity right. So, this becomes unsatisfiable, what about first one? So, let us complete that then I L does not satisfy sigma union x either. Okay. This is what it is telling. Okay. In this case what happens? If I L satisfies sigma, then since sigma entails x, I L satisfies x, right. So, I L does not satisfy not x, okay. So, I L is not a state model of sigma union not x. Is that okay? So now, is it clear? First one. If I L satisfies sigma, then I L satisfies x because sigma entails x. Right? Now, I L does not satisfy not x because of connective not. By monotonicity, I L does not satisfy sigma union not x, and also by definition because not x belongs to sigma union not x. So, one of them it does not satisfy therefore, it does not satisfy the set fine. On the other hand suppose I L does not satisfy sigma then I L does not satisfy sigma union x because in sigma there is one which it does not satisfy. So, also sigma union x, but we need sigma union not x let us take not x any set we could have taken fine sigma union not x. Right. So, in any case whatever state I L you start with it does not satisfy sigma union not x. Now, give that argument not before it therefore, sigma union not x is unsatisfiable. Is it clear? So, this says I L does not satisfy sigma union not x whatever be this I L. So, sigma union not x is unsatisfiable. Okay. So, conversely what you do? Conversely, suppose sigma union not x is unsatisfiable. So, again there can be two cases I L 
satisfies sigma or I L does not satisfy sigma. If I L does not satisfy sigma, then what happens? So, all those I L for all those I L the statement if I L satisfies sigma then I L satisfies x is true vacuously right that is what we want sigma enters x fine. So, when I L does not satisfy sigma then if I L satisfies sigma then I L satisfies x is vacuously true. Okay. In this case when I L satisfies sigma we know that I L does not satisfy sigma union not x because sigma union not x is unsatisfiable. Therefore, this I L must falsify not x at least one of them is falsified right, but all of in sigma are satisfied. So, the other one is falsified right. So, this means I L falsifies not x therefore, I L satisfies x that is what we wanted. Is that clear? So, that means if I L is a model a state model of sigma then I L is a state model of x is satisfied that sentence is true in both the cases that sentence is true therefore, sigma enters x. Is it clear? So, the same proof will hold for the second one also. What you have to do is replace every occurrence of x not having not there with not x and every occurrence of not x as x simultaneously you replace x by not x and not x by x right simultaneously in this proof itself. So, you get the proof for the second one fine. Now, deduction theorem we can prove similarly they are also propositional this is really propositional proof we have not done anything with I L you could have started with any interpretation itself fine. Right? 